the Prosperity 2nd Edition, and the new cards that were added to that, and also ranked in Thunder Dominion immediately on release. These were actually ranked the second, <laughs> maybe not the second, but right after they were previewed, so the takes are much hotter than normal. Um, so that's pretty good. Bit of an announcement, I suppose, is that Hinterland 2nd Edition has also been announced, and so I'll be saving my ranking of Hinterlands until after that comes out. Hope that's not a big problem. Won't get to see those first edition cards that get cut in that list, but, well, what can we do? Maybe I'll get to the deprecated stuff at some point. Well, at any rate, let's go ahead and take a look at these cards. Um, I think, like, Prosperity was improved a lot by the addition of these cards, but maybe that's just me. Um, let's go ahead and have a look at the first one here. So, so the lowest ranked card in uh, out of the new Prosperity cards is Magnate. This is it. It... Um, Let's you reveal your hand and put one card per treasure in it. This is the replacement for Counting House. Uh, seems quite a bit stronger than Counting House on average. Uh, the draw potential for Magnate is pretty big, potentially. Um, you probably don't want it to be the main draw in your deck. You probably want to have some other draw to set it up so that you draw a whole lot. But, you know, potentially this could draw, I don't know, seven cards or even more than that. You know, if you can get your deck uh, moving enough. One of the problems there, though, is that your deck already has to be pretty good at drawing to make Magnate draw a whole lot. Um, you also uh, probably just need a lot of villages to make it good in any other case, or like Lost City, Villagers, Champion, something along those lines. I think like one of the biggest barriers to entry here is, I guess, it costing five and then like kind of needing villages to be good since it's non-terminal. But if you use it in a deck only with treasure cards, maybe like a bunch of special treasures from this set, then it would be pretty strong on its own. So it's definitely not a bad card at all. Uh, and it was ranked right below Forge, and I think B tier is probably fair for Magnate. I could see it being a little stronger. It is draw, and it did just come out, and it's a new type of draw card. So I think uh, it's fair to say we probably haven't like figured out every synergy goes with this thing. So yeah, I think it's a pretty good card, and we're going to put it right here in the B tier. Uh, the next card I would like to take a look at is Crystal Ball. Yeah, Crystal Ball, uh, this is a controversial one, I suppose. It's the replacement for Venture. So five coin treasure. We got lots of new alternate treasures in this set, which is great. Um, only gives one coin, just like Venture. You look at the top card of your deck. You can trash it. You can discard it. If it's an action or treasure, you can play it. So at first, this seems really good because it gives you um, lots of good effects like trashing an estate, discarding a victory card, uh, you know, playing an action or treasure if you happen to hit one. But um, I don't know. I feel like in practice, this isn't going to be all that impressive. Uh, like you'd have to get pretty lucky to hit something you want to trash at the point when you could afford Crystal Ball. Um, yeah, and, and honestly, like, Doing the trash effect is probably one of the least cost-efficient things it can do. You probably want to be playing treasure with Crystal Ball since it's your buy phase. Like, there's some actions that are nice to play in the buy phase, but there's a lot of actions you don't want to play in the buy phase. For instance, like Worker's Village, you you wouldn't want to play that in the buy phase. I, I don't know. So I think it's going to be a fairly situational, um, and... One of the biggest problems with it is going to be that it's costs five and is thus competing with a lot of other strong cards. And so it's going to end up getting skipped a fair amount. I do think it's an interesting card, but yeah, I I don't know if it's very good. I would maybe rank it below Magnate here, but that's not where it ended up <laughs> with the initial takes from the crowd. And they actually ranked it above Bishop, um, which I think is wrong, but... <laughs> Well, here we are. That's where Crystal Ball is for now. It'll be interesting to see uh, how it actually pans out. Uh, next card on the list is Anvil. Anvil, three coin treasure. So all right, that's a better price. It only costs three. Um, this is the replacement for Talisman. So it costs a. It gives you one coin, and you can discard a treasure to gain a card costing up to four. So it's a workshop effect. It's non-terminal, being a treasure and all. But it has the serious disadvantage of uh, not being able to make use of gain and play like other workshops do. So you can only gain cards to use on later turns unless you happen to have like Villa or Calvary or Cavalry, sorry, in your game. And that's just not going to be every game. It doesn't have quite the blowout factor Talisman could have, I think. 
Uh, you also have to discard treasures to get your four cost card. So that is going to hurt your economy a bit on the turn that you play Anvil. So I think like that uh, makes it a little bit less good uh, than maybe some other workshop variants, but still not a bad thing. I mean, you can draw it dead and play it, so that's something. Uh, and if you need a gainer, like, you're probably going to get it, and gainers do tend to be pretty good. So I think like it's situational but uh, decent is how I would say it. And it was ranked right here above Crystal Ball, which I think is fair enough. I think like middle of B is probably about where I would put it, just thinking about it. So the next card we're going to look at is the replacement for Mountebank. Yeah, <laughs> that was a controversial one. Yeah, so <laughs> here, uh, Charlatan, which is a more interesting card than Mountebank, I think. So um, you get three coin, everyone else gets a curse. And in games using this, Curse is also a treasure worth one. Now, I have not actually played with this card. I think I maybe played with it one time so far. So for me, it's a little bit hard to uh, say for sure how deep of an effect turning Curses into treasures uh, has on the game. Um, it probably is pretty nice in that like, there's some cards that can trash treasure cards, like, say, Spice Merchant, <laughs> that suddenly get a buff from this. Uh, it also just being able to get some coin from your curses is interesting and it does weaken charlatan a fair amount I think so I think like it's kind of a middle of the road cursor like it does at least give a curse and those do give minus one points at the end of the game um, but their cursing is just not nearly as bad when you at least get a coin out of it so yeah like it still hurts to get hit by them but you're not in nearly as much pain as when you got hit by mountebank and yeah, I think like in the end, Charlatan ends up just being kind of above average because yeah, <laughs> again, a cursor, but not nearly as bad as it used to be. Uh, is it, it, yeah, like I've said, it's a kind of an interesting card I'm going to have to play with more before I can uh, make like a deep judgment on it, I feel like. It was ranked above Mint and below Watchtower, which I think is a fair place to put it. Uh, upper end of B tier is what it seems like. Uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe it's a lot better than we think it is. I, plus three coin is... Like, uh, fairly significant, right? Like, uh, that's pretty good for a five-cost card. A lot of the stronger attacks, like Legionary, have that. So, I don't know. Maybe that matters more than I think it does. Um, but, yeah, B tier for now. Let's look at the next card. Is It is Tiara. Right here. This is the replacement for Royal Seal, and is definitely one of the biggest improvements on a card. <laughs> Only costs four. It gives a buy. And this turn, when you gain a card, you can put it onto your deck, just like Royal Seal. That effect remains pretty good. The main problem with Royal Seal was that it costs five, and it was like stupid to buy it over other stuff. Um, but in addition to that, you get to play a treasure from your hand twice, so it's a throne for treasures, um, which just seems excellent to me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, getting to play treasure twice, uh, you know, you play a gold, you get six coin. You play a platinum, you get ten coin instead of five. Uh, plus you get a buy with it. I don't know. That seems really strong to me. <clears throat> Not to mention there's all these alt treasures. Like Crystal Ball is probably a fair bit better with Tiara on the board than it normally is. And it's already... Uh, it would be like a decent effect if it didn't cost so much. But maybe it's worth it with Tiara. I don't know. It feels like there's going to be a lot of combos here. Um, <clears throat> I think at only four... Uh, this is going to be a good buy. Like, in the games I've played with it, I've definitely bought it and used it. So, yeah, it seems like it's a pretty good card to just splash into decks. Um, I would get... I, I would put it in the A tier. I would put it in A tier. It's, it's ranked here above Watchtower. And, yeah, like, that feels fair to me. I feel like it's a card you're going to be getting. Like, the four cost, I feel like, uh, uh, definitely improves it a bit. But... To be fair, I could see someone putting it in B as well, because I think there's going to be some boards where it's not very impactful. I don't know, the fact that it does three different things uh, certainly uh, says something in its favor. For instance, like you get a bunch of extra money from throwing a treasure, or and, and then you buy two cards with it. They could be two engine parts that you then top deck. I don't know. Like Maybe this is a dream scenario I'm thinking of, but it seems like that would be rather strong of an effect for four coins. So... Yeah, um, a, it seems like an A tier to me. Uh, I guess let me know how you feel. I think it seems pretty good. All right, next up, we've got Investment. This is a weird one. So this is the replacement for Loan. 
trash a card from your hand. And you choose one. You can do plus coin, which basically makes investment a goat. And we know goat is really good, but one of the reasons goat was good is that it's an heirloom, and it's always in your deck from the start. Okay, um, so the question is, is goat worth four? I don't know. I haven't played with this one yet. <laughs> um, alternately, you can reveal your hand and get one victory point. Uh, and, oh, sorry, you could trash this and reveal your hand and get one victory point per differently named treasure. That seems pretty situational to me. Um, now, I mean, if you have lots of different types of treasure, you could get, like, I don't know, four or five points out of this, but it doesn't seem like a very significant amount of points to me. Now, to be fair, you could do it after you've already done your thinning and investment is just kind of taking up space. That would be a good time to pop this thing and get some points. And you might not even care how many points you're getting out of it at that point. But I guess if you do have lots of treasures, then, I don't know, investment could pay off. But, I don't know, it just feels like it's going to be a middling effect. It's just kind of nice to have in most games. Like, if you just have copper, silver, gold, and investment in a game, I think it's fairly unlikely that you're going to get um, both... You're going to have, like, all three treasures sticking around to get points from investment. You're probably happy to just get rid of those coppers, right? So, yeah, I don't know. But then games with lots of alt treasures, I could see it being pretty strong. It's kind of like when Forager is good for economy. Those games aren't every game, but they do come up. Um, so, yeah, I think it's going to be uh, fairly strong, and, you know, a goat is never going to be that bad. But I do think it's significantly worse than goat because, um, yeah, it doesn't start in your deck, and you have to get it, so you have to wait a few turns before it starts thinning your deck. Yeah, still, like, it was ranked here above Tiara. I don't know, like, I kind of feel like Tiara might be the better card, but it, I can't, yeah, I can't knock this card, and it's a trasher. <laughs> it's non-terminal. It... <laughs> Yeah, it has like a bonus effect. Pretty good there. Next is War Chest, which is our replacement for Contraband. So the player to your left names a card. It's another treasure, five costs, like Contraband. The player to your left names a card. You gain a card costing up to five that hasn't been named for War Chest this turn. Now, I think on average this is going to be a lot stronger than Contraband was, um, it always gains you stuff costing up to 5, which means it could also gain you things that cost less than 5, which is a big thing to note here, right? So let's say there are 10 cards in the kingdom, and like, I don't know, 3 of them cost 5, and the rest costs under that. Well, even if the good one that you wanted at 5 was blocked, you could still gain any of those other cards, and there's probably something else you want there. Right, so yeah, I think it's significantly more versatile than Contraband in that regard. Um, it doesn't give you economy though, that's the only thing. Like, Contraband gave you three coin, and occasionally that would be nice. Like, if the player didn't guess what you wanted to buy, right, like that three coin and a buy came in pretty handy for you. But yeah, this is a different effect altogether in some ways. I think most of the time it's going to be pretty good for gaining those five cost cards. Like, de definitely this card is nothing to sneeze at. Um, I do think it's probably worse than the two cards we just went over, although it was ranked just above them. Um, I have that right, don't I? I have that right. Yeah, yeah, it's ranked just above investment. And I think I think it's definitely good, but um, I'm a little hesitant to say it's that good. Like, I, I think maybe <laughs> this take is a bit too hot. Uh, still, it, you know, it's a gainer that gains fives. It's also non-terminal. Um, we saw a similar card in Allies, which was the, uh, oh, was it Sunken Treasure? Was that the card? Uh, I could go look for it, but I, I, I don't feel like <laughs> uh, opening up that tab right now. Yeah, um, and that card ended up a little disappointing. War Chest, you can kind of buy more directly than Sunken Treasure, so maybe maybe it's a little bit better. Hmm. I'm going to have to play more games with it before I can say for sure. Like, but for the time being, yeah, I guess I, I could I could see it at the A tier, maybe on the low end of A tier, but definitely up there. And uh, perhaps I, I'd be happy to be proven wrong and see that it's actually a very strong card. So yeah, pretty good gainer here. Um, there are going to be those games, I guess I should mention, where there's just one card you really need to be gaining with this and your opponent blocks it over and over again. Um, yeah, and that would be really unfortunate if that happened, but I feel like you shouldn't get War Chest if, if, if that's the situation you're in, right? Like, yeah, you, if there's only one thing you need, then you're probably not going to use War Chest to get those. So, yeah, that's about, uh, where I am with on that, on that one. 
Alright, so the next card we need to look at, there's only two left, yeah, is Clerk. So Clerk is an interesting one because it doesn't seem that great, I guess, from a distance, but um, it actually is pretty strong. So uh, it's only four costs, it's an attack and a reaction. You get two coin on play. Each other player with five or more cards in hand puts one onto their deck. So it's kind of like Ghost Ship, a little bit weaker since they're only putting one card up. But I would say that's a better attack than, say, Urchin, because you're delaying the opponent. Um, and that tends to be a little bit stronger than just making them discard stuff, right? You're uh, you're making it take longer for them to get to their shuffle. It's, a, it, you know, it's just a subtle effect, right? But it really adds up because you can keep playing cl Clerk throughout the game, just like Militia. It's not a duration. It's a reaction. So it doesn't, like, stay in play. Um the bottom effect of this, at the start of your turn, you can play it from your hand. Yeah, you could just play this for free if it's in your hand at the beginning of your turn. And it's not always going to be there. The attack is still probably worth playing this card for, even if it's not there at the start of your turn. So, um, yeah, it's going to be an extremely annoying attack. In the games I've played with it, I've definitely been hurt pretty bad by Clerk, and I think it's uh, very strong, and I think it's actually underranked in Thunder Dominion here. It was placed below Quarry. Like, all these cards were clumped together probably because people didn't know what to make of them. Um, but I would actually, like, if it were me, I would rank Clerk more, like, here, above City. Um, maybe not further than that. Like, I think it's a, it's a little bit underranked. But I don't know. I could be wrong. Maybe it's a lot more ineffectual than I'm thinking it is. It just seems like it hurts about as much as Militia, and Militia is a very strong card. So yeah, I don't have too much else to say about this one. I think it's going to be very annoying. <laughs> very annoying to deal with. So finally, we have Collection. Where is it? Yes, this was our replacement for Goons. Which, yeah, that was probably the card people were most sad to see go. Um, you know, on the bright side, Collection does a lot of the same stuff that Goons did. and yeah, Just in a less mean way. So... <laughs> So it's a 5 cost treasure, it's cheaper than Goons, it gives you 2 coins and a buy, so the same coin effect as Goons, and this turn, when you gain an action card, you get 1 victory point. Alright, so it does all the same point stuff as Goons, um, with the caveat that you have to be buying or gaining action cards. Okay, so you can't just buy out coppers like you could with Goons to gouge up points, and there's no attack on this thing. So the question is, is this better or worse than Goons? And I think the answer is that it is different from Goons because it is a treasure, which means you can draw this, say, with a smithy and still play it. Uh, yeah, you don't have to worry about villages with this thing. Um, they're cheaper, so you can load up on them quicker. On the other hand, like they don't have that attack, so you don't get kind of that extra benefit that pushes Goons over the edge. Um, still, like... The, the VP points were really the crazy part of Goons at the end of the day. The fact that it like turned the game on its head so much. And Collection does still have that. Now, you can only gain action cards, but to be fair, if you're building a, dig, a, a good deck, you're probably buying lots of action cards, right? And so this is just going to encourage you to continue building and not worry about greening even more than Goons already did, because Goons uh, wanted you to stall out the game by potentially buying victory cards and coppers to gain uh, extra points, right? So, yeah, Collection doesn't have that. It just asks you to keep building, I guess, until a three pile is threatened. Um, so I think, I feel like the weakness of this card is that um, yeah, having to buy it early and then buy action cards is a little bit counterintuitive, since you want to be getting those action cards to help you draw through your deck um, yeah, and Collection doesn't help you there. All it does is kind of give you points uh, with the cards that you're gaining. So, huh, yeah, it's a, it's a really hard thing to say. Like, I, I have a hard time saying exactly how strong I think this card is. But with that said, we know for a fact that it's S-tier. Plenty of games have been played with it. Um, <laughs> and uh, people have just been getting crazy amounts of points with Collection. It's plenty strong. Um, it goes to show that Goons didn't need that attack at all. <laughs> it would have been just fine without it. Um, yeah, Collection is still like an S-tier, very centralizing card, even without uh, having that attack that Goons has. Um, yeah, and I'm going to have to actually play some games with Collection. I Believe it or not, I haven't played any with it. I've only like watched a couple and like read some logs. 
Um, and it seems very, very powerful. Um, I agree with it being in the S tier. I agree with it being below King's Court. Um, I guess let me know what you think. Uh, yeah, I think I, I would... My gut says that it's worse than Goons just because I know Goons so well. And I feel like Goons encourages more degenerate play than Collection does. Um, but maybe I'm wrong about that. I guess we'll have to see. Either way, very strong card. And that is it for Prosperity 2nd Edition. As you can see now... Um, before, if you look at the first edition video, you'll see like there was so much more stuff in the C and D tiers, and now um, it's a very powerful set. Like everything is mid to high level, I feel like. So yeah, Prosperity got a big power buff from this second edition upgrade, and that's where we are. So I believe the next thing on my list to do was Hinterlands, but I'm going to have to wait for the second edition to come out. So yeah, I'll, I'll see what I want to do after this. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.